click the bell icon to turn on notifications. Welcome back. We've reached the final stages of our beginner's course on monday.com. In this section, we'll dig a bit deeper into the automation and integrations capabilities. And we'll start with automations. Right at the beginning of the course, in section two, I briefly described how to create simple automations in monday.com. But the reality is that all automations in monday.com are simple. Let's see how this works. You can add automations to any board in monday.com. And boards can have as many automations as you need. Each automation consists of two parts, a trigger and an action. The trigger specifies what event should happen for the automation to kick off, and the action specifies what we should do about it. In our Guesthouse Bookings board, there are quite a few things that we would like to automate. Here are a few examples. When new bookings are captured using the bookings form, we want to set the initial state to inquiry. When a booking inquiry is registered, we want to immediately send a confirmation message to the guest saying that we've received their inquiry and will be in touch shortly. When the inquiry is confirmed, we want to send a link to our guest information booklet to the guest. When the booking is paid, we want to generate a payment receipt and send that via email. A few days prior to arrival, we want to send directions to the guest to help him find the place. Also, this email will include a list of important items to pack. After the departure date, we want to set the booking status to complete. And once the booking is complete, we want to send a link to our feedback form, asking the guest to give us feedback on their stay. All of these things are essential to a great guest experience, but they all take time. However, when we automate them, we can bank that time and use it more productively elsewhere. At this point, I need to point out one technicality. If you look at this list of things we want to automate, you may notice that items 1 and 6 happen entirely inside monday.com, while the other items all interact with external systems. Mostly they interact with our email service provider, but item 4 also interacts with our accounting system. This is the key differentiator. Items 1 and 6 are called automations, while items 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7 are called integrations. But both automations and integrations follow the same pattern of a trigger and an action. This lesson focuses on automations though. In this lesson I'll show you how to implement automation 1, and then you'll implement number 6 as part of the exercise. Integrations will be tackled in the next lesson. Okay, so let's get into it. I'll open our bookings board. From section 5, you may remember that we added a form to the board which allows guests to capture booking inquiries themselves. But when they capture the inquiry, we hide the status field from them. As a result, the inquiry is loaded into our board without a status. We'll fix that using an automation. To add an automation, we click on the Automate link right at the top of the board. This takes us to a list of board automations. Our board already has one automation, which we added in section two. Now we'll add a second automation by clicking on the Add New Automation button. This opens up the Automation Center, which is a list of automation recipes. Each recipe is designed to respond to a defined trigger and execute a defined action. There is, as you can expect, a long list of recipes. The easiest way to find one for your needs is to use the search box. We want to set the status of an item when it is created. So I'll search for the terms created status. This gives me two potential options, one of which meets my needs exactly. When an item is created, set status to something. I'll pick that one. The next screen presents the recipe in a structured format. The top line is the trigger, i.e when an item is created. And the bottom line is the action. Here we specify what should be done when the recipe triggers. As part of the action, two phrases are underlined. These are the ones that should be configured by us. We need to tell Monday what status column should be set, and we should say what value it should be set to. To configure these options, I simply click on the underlined word and select from the provided options. We'll pick the status column and we'll set it to inquiry. 
Once we do that, the Create Automation button at the bottom right is activated, allowing us to create the automation. There we go. Now our automation has been created and added to the list. On the right-hand side of each automation, you'll see a switch, which allows us to flip the automation on and off. And of course, you can edit the automation as needed by selecting the Automation option and Edit Automation. There are some other options as well, but let me first capture a new inquiry to test if our automation works. I'll open the form and capture a booking inquiry. I'll fast forward through the capturing process. Okay, so I've submitted the form. Once submitted, it will add an item into the inquiries group, and if our automation works, the new item status should be set to inquiry. Okay, here we have the new item, and see how the status was correctly updated to inquiry. I want to show you something else in the automation screen. If I click on the automation menu, I can select the option automation activity. This gives me a full audit trail of every execution of the automation which is often helpful if you're debugging an automation. In our case, it only shows one because we've only run it once. So in this lesson, we added just one automation, but using this knowledge, you will now be able to search through the list of available automation recipes to find the ones that match your needs exactly. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.